In the middle of a harsh winter, most sailors dream of warm summer breezes that propel their boats across open water. There are some sailors, however, who embrace the chilly winds of winter and look forward to when the lake freezes over. Their ice boats can travel in excess speeds of 70 miles an hour. That's fast enough to melt the ice in any sailor's veins, no matter how cold the weather. When temperatures get below freezing and the added chill in the wind makes it feel much colder, most people stay indoors because the thought of being outside is unbearable. However, there are some people who embrace the bitter winds and freezing temperatures because the cold brings the opportunity to enjoy hard water sailing. I enjoy being outside. Um, I also enjoy the adrenaline rush. Uh, there's times to where you feel like you're almost out of control on these boats, they're going so fast. And it all depends on, uh, of course, on the wind. So. But a lot of it's the, the adrenaline rush in, in going fast. An ice boat can go three to five times faster than the speed of the wind. That's because the sail on an ice boat actually acts like an airplane wing or airfoil that creates lift, which translates into speed. And because there's very little drag or friction as an ice boat skates across the ice, it's possible to achieve incredible speeds. Well, maybe it's maybe six years ago, uh, Bertzel, uh, with his GPS, he clocked 75.5 out here. And we had perfect ice the whole lake, so he, he had a good chance to get going and really carry it. Um, the conditions don't normally allow you to let it go like that. Um, so, you know, you work with what you've got. Today we've got an extra ridge to worry about. And, you have to be careful out there and, and, and uh, look for trouble because it, you have to respect water even if it's frozen. At one time, ice boats were the fastest way to transport people or freight. In 1871, the New York Times reported on a race on the Hudson River between a passenger train and the ice boats Zephyr and Icicle. The newspaper reported the novel crafts passed the train at a rate of a mile a minute. And in a 1935 newsreel, Chevrolet tested one of its cars against an ice boat. According to the announcer, the Chevy was not only a more comfortable ride, it was also faster. It takes some speed to overtake an ice boat traveling with the wind. Come on there, fellows, you're getting behind. So ice boats have been on this lake since this lake since people moved on to this lake. Our parents and grandparents had old stern steerers out here. Uh, back in the days when there wasn't anything else to do, uh, people would come out on the lake and ice skate or build weird boats and go out sailing. At the turn of the century, ice boats were large and were steered with a tiller that turned a runner at the stern, much like a rudder on a sailboat. Most modern ice boats are steered with a runner at the bow or front of the boat and are much smaller in size. There are several classes of ice boats, but the most popular is the DN. Named after the Detroit News, the first DN was built in the newspaper's hobby shop in 1936. Designed to be both inexpensive and something that could be built at home, the boat is 12 feet long and carries 60 feet of sail. Today, the International DN Ice Yacht Racing Association has around 2,000 members. This is a DN that, that uh, I made about four or five years ago. Uh, it's ash sides and the, the runner plank is out of ash. And the walnut accents are trees that I actually felled, dried, and then milled. So uh, I, got all, I got all my hands on this one, you know. Most of the fun is doing that too, you know, and of course it's great to utilize it as well. So, uh, just something about being on the ice. It's
It's been said that people who enjoy ice boating spend as much time repairing their boats as they do sailing them. At the speeds the boats are capable of achieving, imperfections in the ice can do a lot of damage. And there are years when the weather doesn't provide many opportunities to sail. You know, some of the guys say it's the safest sport around because uh, some years you don't even get to do it. Um, and that's true. I mean, if the snow comes in too quickly, uh, it's over, uh, over before it started. Safety is a major concern for anyone involved in ice boating. Helmets are every bit as important as warm clothing, and ice picks are worn around the neck just in case a boat goes through the ice. Jim Anastasi credits the ice picks with saving his life when he went through the ice in 2011. Uh, it was a uh, Sunday morning, I came home from church and uh, two of my friends were out here and, and we had uh, 29 mile an hour winds and it was a wonderful, wonderful wind. I, I just wasn't paying attention where I was and I, I did a, a jibe and as I came around it was right there, it was open water. I was in there probably for 10 minutes uh, but able to climb out, we all wore picks. Uh, if it wasn't for the picks, I wouldn't be here. It was a wonderful day to sail, but that ended it quickly. Most ice boaters are sailors, who during the summer are on the lake when the weather isn't nearly as cold and the water is in a much more liquid state. Ice boating allows them the opportunity to enjoy the lake and the outdoors year round. I sure do love the sport. Uh, it, they're great guys to be with and uh, certainly on a, on a Iowa day like this where the sun's shining and you've got ice and not much else to do, ice boating is fantastic. <laughs>